How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It is Mr. Donahue here again, this time taking a look at balancing chemical equations and how to abide by the laws of nature. All right, so our objectives are to balance chemical equations so that they obey the law of conservation of matter. That's pretty much it. So what is the law of conservation of matter? Well, it's simply saying that matter cannot be created or destroyed in an isolated system. So in layman's terms, it just means everything that you had at the start must be there at the end. And everything that you end up with had to have been there at the beginning. Stuff doesn't just disappear into nothingness or spring, in, spring into existence from nothing. Uh, so if we take a look at this chemical equation right here, you see we got C6H12O6, we got O2 giving us CO2 and H2O. So wait a minute. We had originally six carbons in our reactants, but we only end up with one in our product. So if you see, we got six carbons and we only have one carbon in our product. Where did the other carbons go? We had eight oxygens in our reactants, right? We got six here and two there, and we only have three in our products. So where did the rest of the oxygens go? And hydrogens. We had 12 hydrogen atoms, and now we only got two. Where did everything go? This isn't right. We need to balance this equation. So how do we balance this equation? Well, first thing you're going to want to do is create an inventory for every element in the reactants and a separate inventory for the products. So what that's going to kind of look like is you're going to have the arrow over here. You put element X, Y, and Z, and you count how many you got of each of them. And then you look on the products, you do the same thing, X, Y, and Z, and how many of each are there. And then you're going to go, all right, well, how do I balance all this? So now you're going to look at one element at a time and balance it by adding a coefficient in front of the compound and update your inventory. You're going to keep doing that until everything's balanced. So uh, when you're done, you need to check to make sure that everything is in the lowest possible form, okay? Meaning that if all your coefficients are multiples of 2, then you need to divide by 2. You need to put them into the simplest whole number ratio. All right, so let's take a look at the example we were talking about. So first thing I'm going to do is create an inventory. i got carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, and I'm going to create a separate inventory for the products and I'm going to put it in the same order so that I can just look across real quick and check. All right, so now I go, how many carbons do I got? Well, I count, I got six. How many hydrogens? I got 12. How many oxygens? I got six and two. So now I got eight oxygens. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the product side. I got one carbon, I got two hydrogens, and I got three oxygens. So I'm just now going to pick one of them to balance. I'm probably, I'm going to start with carbon. How do I balance carbon? Well, I got to put a six in front of the CO2. So now I have six carbons, but I've also changed the amount of oxygen that I have. I have six times two plus this one over here. So now that gives me a total of 13 oxygens. Next, I'm going to balance the hydrogens because why not? So I got 12 on this side and I can count by twos on this side. So how do I get to 12? If I'm counting by twos, well, I put a six in front of this one. So now I have 12 hydrogens, but I also changed the amount of oxygen. I have 12 oxygens from the six CO2s, and I got six from the H2Os. So now I have 18 <laughs> oxygens, and I have eight on this side. Now I can I have eight. I got to get to 18. I can change the C6H12O6, or I can just mess with the oxygen here. And that's what I'm going to do because everything else is balanced. I only want to change my oxygen. So I go, all right, well, how do I get 18 total? Well, I take a look. I got six in my sugar and my C6H12O6, so I need 12 more. So how do I get 12 if I'm counting by two? I put a six in front. So now I have six times two, so I got 12 oxygen from O2, and I have six from the sugar. Now I have a total of 18, and everything is balanced. So now the last thing that I want to do is let me neaten some of this up is I want to make sure that the coefficients are the lowest possible whole numbers. So I take a look. I got 1 for the C6H12O6, 6, 6, six and 6. So everything's good. I can't reduce this anymore because I got a 1 in front. If there was like a 2 in front, then I would divide everything by 2 so I get the simplest whole number ratio, but there isn't. So cool. I'm done. I balanced that one. Awesome. So here are some helpful tricks to know about for when you go to balance some of these, because they're not always going to be super easy. Some of them might try to trick you. So here's some tricks to get back at them. Sometimes you can only count by threes on one side and twos on the other. So you got to go, all right, well, how am I going to do this? Well, you can find a common multiple for each of them and get to it. So if it's two and three on, you know, two on one side, threes on the other, you can get both of them to six. So keep that in mind. 
is everything balanced except oxygen? And you're like, oh, shoot, I can only count by two oxygens, and it's going to mess everything up because i got to get an odd number. How am I going to do that? Well, here's a little trick. All right, You can use a fractional coefficient to get the exact number of oxygen atoms you need, and then you multiply by the denominator so that the fraction becomes a whole number. So basically, like if I needed... If I needed three oxygen atoms, but I had O2, you can say, all right, well, I want three halves of that because that'll give you three oxygen atoms. And then you go, all right, well, now let me times the whole thing by two so that two cancel out. And I'm going to do that for every coefficient in the equation. I have an example. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. And then you need to check to see if you can simplify it all. All right. So let's take a look at this one. I got AL plus O2 gives me AL2O3. So again, create my inventory, ALO. A, L, and O. I got one over here, and I got two oxygens. I got two aluminum and three oxygens. So now I can start to balance these things. I go, all right, well, let me take a look. Aluminum. So I've got to put a two in front here and update my inventory. So now the aluminums are happy for now. Now I got oxygen here. I can only count by two, and I got oxygen here, and I can only count by three. That's going to be a tricky one to do. But wait a minute, I know I can get both of these numbers to 6. So how do I get this side to 6? I put a 3 in front. So now I go, all right, well, let me update my inventory. I now have 6 oxygens, and I can put a 2 in front here and update my inventory. Now I have 6 oxygens, but I've also changed the aluminum. I now have 4 aluminum. So now how do I get to 4? Well, i got to change this 2 over here. You know, now that's no longer happy. i got to change this to 4. So now I got four aluminums. So I got four aluminums on the left, four aluminums on the right. They're good. I got six oxygens on the left, six oxygens on the right. They're good. I am now done. I just got to check to see if I can simplify any of this. So let's see. I got four, three, and two. Three is a prime number, so I know I definitely can't simplify anything because all of these guys are not multiples of three. So I'm done. Cool. Let's take a look at another one. Got C6H14 plus O2 gives me CO2 and H2O. So again, inventory C, H, and O, C, H, and O, and count everything. I got six, 14 hydrogens, and two oxygens. I got one carbon, I got two hydrogens, and I got a total of three oxygens. I got two here and one here. <clears throat> so now pick one thing at a time to balance. I'm going to start with the carbons. So I put a six in front of here, update my inventory. I got six carbons. I've also changed the oxygen, so now I got 12 plus 1 oxygen, so I got 13 oxygens. And now I'm going to look, all right, well, hydrogens, I got 14 on the left and 2 on the right, so I'm going to put a 7 in front of this. So now I have 14 hydrogens, but I've also changed the oxygens. So now I have 12 oxygens plus 7 oxygens, I have 19 oxygens. Now this is that trick that I was telling you about. I got to get to 19 oxygens, and I can only count by two. Everything else is balanced, so I don't really want to mess with things and like guess and check. What I know I can do is, well, if I need 19 oxygen atoms and I'm counting by two, I need 19 halves of O2. So now everything will be balanced, but you can't leave that fraction there. So how do you get rid of the fraction? You times the whole thing by 2. So you go, all right, 2 times this whole thing. So what do I end up getting when I do that? Well, let's work it out. I get 2 of these C6H14s. I get 19 oxygens. I get 12 CO2s. And I get 14 H2Os. And now to make sure, you know, I encourage you guys always to check your work. So now that I've done all that, let me just check to make sure that everything is still balanced. How many carbons do I have? I have 12 on this side. I have 28 hydrogens and I have 38 oxygen atoms. How many carbons do I have on the right side? I have 12. So that's good. I have, let's see, 14 times 2 gives me 28 hydrogens. So that's good. And then I have 24 oxygens plus 14 oxygens over there, which means I have 38 oxygen atoms. So everything's good. Now I'm done. Okay? So practice. Why don't you guys like pause the screen and try some of these real quick, and then I'll show you what you get. All right, welcome back.
Hey, hope you had a good practice. Let's take a look at this. So same thing. Uh, create an inventory. I got NA. And now this NO3, here's a little trick. Because it shows up as NO3 in the products, you can treat it as just one thing. So boom, NO3, and then I got PB, and I got O, and how many of each of them do I got? I got one of everything. And I do the same thing. I'm going to put them in the same order that I had on the left side, so I can just look left side, right side, and make sure everything is equal. So I create my inventory on this side. I got one PB. I got two NO3s. I got two NAs, and I got one O. So now I go, all right, pick whatever's not balanced. So, well, NAs aren't balanced, so let me put a two in front of here. And update my inventory too. And I also changed the NO3. So now everything is good. That's all I had to do. I'm done. Piece of cake. Or pie. Whatever you like. Alright, so same process. Create an inventory. I got MN. I got NO2, which I can treat as just one thing because it shows up as NO2 again in the products. I got beryllium and I got chlorine. So take my inventory. I got one, two, one, two. And now same order for my inventory on my products to make sure that I can just look side to side to check everything. And let's see, I got one beryllium, I got two NO2s, I got one MN, and I got two CLs. Oh, snap, crackle, pop. Would you look at that? Everything is balanced. I didn't even have to do anything. So what happens to these blanks? They're one. Or you can just leave them blank. All right, but they're one. Everything is balanced. Okay, let's take a look at this one. I got H2SO4. I got BOH3. So let me create my inventory. I got Bs. Uh, I got Hs. I got sulfur. I got oxygen. I think that's all the elements, right? So H, B, S, and O. And yeah, let's take a look. How many hydrogens do we got? Well, I got two here and I got three here, so that gives me a total of five. I got one boron, I have one sulfur, and I have seven oxygens. So I got four here, and then this three gets distributed to the H and to the O. So let me take a look at this side. Well, I got two hydrogens, I got two borons, I got three sulfurs, and I got 13 oxygens, right? I got three times four gives me 12, plus this one over here. All right, well, let me just pick something that's not balanced. Um, let me clean this up a little bit, huh? Okay, I'm going to start with boron. I'm going to put a 2 in front of this boron. So now I changed boron to 2, but I also changed my O's and my H's. So now I have a total of 6 hydrogens and 6 oxygens from that. So I now have oh snap, 6 plus this 2, so that gives me 8 hydrogens. I have... Uh, six plus this four, so now I got ten oxygens. So now I'll pick something else that's not balanced. I'm going to go with sulfur. Uh, so sulfur, I have three on the right side, so I need three on the left side. So now I have three sulfurs, but I've also changed other things. I have six hydrogens here, plus the six over there, so now I got a total of twelve hydrogens. I changed the oxygens, and I now have 12 oxygens plus the six that were over there. So now I have a total of 18 oxygens. And yeah, cool. So now I go, all right, well, what's not balanced? My hydrogens aren't balanced. Let me put a six in front of this guy right here so that now I have 12 hydrogens on this side. And I also changed my oxygens. I have five more oxygens. So total oxygens now is 18. And then look, everything is balanced. So now my last thing to do is check. Can I reduce this at all? I got three, two, one, and six. So no, I can't reduce that anymore. I'm done. All right, so summarize for me. How do you balance chemical equations? And that's pretty much it. Be able to do that, all right? Develop that skill. Have questions. Bring them to class and ask me. I'll see you then. Okay, bye.